Wow, the rise of AI technology is crazy. And it's presenting both challenges and opportunities for college graduates and employers at the same time. And I can't think of a more important time to cover this topic than May of 2023, right? My name is Alex. I'm the host of the Dadpreneur Podcast. And today I want to talk to you about everything that's going on in AI. You know, the question is, for college graduates, uh, do they need to adopt and adapt quickly? Um, is it going to prevent them from finding a job, landing a uh, their dream career if they're not adapt? Because they're not adapt, right? We know that all the colleges around the country, maybe some exceptions are MIT and Stanford, but even then, even those schools, uh, it, unless you were in a engineering or math or science degree, if you weren't pursuing those degrees, you probably didn't do much in AI. Perhaps you had one or two classes to in, uh, introduce you to it. But it is transforming many different industries as we speak. It's it's probably the biggest thing that I have ever experienced. Definitely more than social media and definitely more than smartphone or even the internet, right? But but here's the deal. The, the, the good news about AI is that it's not going to make knowledge obsolete and, and human skills, right? As Sam Altman said in his testimony earlier this week when he was um, uh, went before Congress, is ChatGPT is a tool and not a creature. That, that's literally what he said to, in his opening statement. And I believe that too. We've been using this tool for, you know, four months, ChatGPT and hundreds of others. Believe me, there are over 4,000 AI tools and apps out there right now. And it's just going to grow, right? It reminds me of a time in 2006 when smartphones exploded on the scene and all you heard was commercials with, there's an app for that, there's an app for this. And before you knew it, app developers had millions of apps. Now, most of them not so useful for uh, everyone, but many of them became very niche. I see the same thing happening with AI here, right? Artificial intelligence and generative AI. It, you're going to have tools, you're going to have software that cater to specific niches, specific tasks and projects, right? It's not going to solve everything and you're not going to use a tool for everything you do so that you don't work, right? But the truth is, if you have a college graduate who is about to go land a job, that question is going to be asked, right? Are you working with AI? Can you give me an example of how you're using AI to become more efficient? And it's early on, I understand that. But I know from talking to uh, investors and CEOs, this is something that they want their workforce, their, their current employees to adopt quickly. Um, but also when you go out in the market, if you're a, a college grad listening to this podcast right now, do yourself a favor and just immerse yourself in uh, AI and specifically chat GPT, because the truth is, you know, while Google's Bard and, and a lot of Anthropics um, uh, tools and all the other big AIs that are out there, while they're going to make some strides, the big elephant in the room is OpenAI's chat GPT, which is why they were the only ones called to Congress, right? So, you know, you could take a course, sure. You can go to Udemy, Coursera, Stanford offers free courses, MIT as well, but you're gonna spend your wheels a lot. And a lot of those courses, to be honest with you, if, you, if you're taking a course that someone recorded a month ago, you are already behind, okay? So whether you're a college grad or a parent listening to this, I'm telling you, do yourself a favor. If, you have a, if, if, if you're pursuing a career or you want to just hold tight to your current, career, you know, your current job, you got to go out there and start to experiment with AI. And there's no better way of doing it than just using it for everyday tasks. So get your ChatGPT. I, re I definitely recommend getting the paid version because with the paid version, uh, as many of you know this week, you can now have more than 80 apps that are within the program, right? And a lot of these apps do a lot of different things that may not be useful to, to your everyday job, right? But I'm already using it. So there's, a, there's one that's a link reader. I really like that. There's another one for content called WebPilot. I'm using another one that is for SMS called Growing. Uh, for SEO, there's one called Brainwork. But just to give you an idea, if you're a marketing professional, uh, today on the market, there are already over 200 artificial intelligence, so AI apps like Jasper and of course ChatGPT, there are more than 200 apps just for SEO. 
and way more than that for writing. So the current market, as it looks right now, if you look across the the, the sphere of everything that is AI, there are more than 4,000 tools already. But that's just scratching the surface. Like I said, it's going to continue to grow. For college graduates, you need to focus on developing your human qualities, obviously, the skills that you obtain in college. But to become more marketable and competitive, you're going to have to adopt AI right? So when you put the two together, right, the, the, the skills that AI are, is not going to take over, like critical thinking, problem solving, I would say creativity to a certain extent, but I have already found that, it, you know, even with ChatGPT, it can really help you with creativity. But embracing lifelong learning is, is just a part of the game. You have to do this. And I think mo most important is to go out and get an internship. So if you're not, if you don't have the expertise in a certain area that you want to pursue, uh, then you need to go get that expertise. I'm thinking of my nephew right now, who's just graduating high school and going into college, and he wants to pursue a career in animation, right? 3D and 2D animation. Well, we know with tools like Midjourney and Dali that a lot of these tools are going to be able to do what videographers, animators, filmmakers. Um, graphic designers, it's going to do a lot of what they do. So you're going to have to be very well versed in the way the tool works and prompting and whatnot. There's no better way of doing that than actually testing the tools. And if you're a recent college grad and you're not getting the job that you want, guess what? I would say go get an internship. Hopefully not unpaid. It's really not fair to to take uh, an internship that is unpaid. I don't I don't like that. Uh, and I would never recommend that you take one. But if you do take an internship, I, take one that is is going to be a company that's going to challenge you, right? Give you the opportunity to do that. But here are some stats that we pulled for for graduates this year in a blog post that we wrote. So 21.5% of college students do an internship, which would mean about 4 million students were interns in 2022. That number is very low. If you talk to any admissions counselor in any college, they wish they can get 100% participation for internships, that those students would go into the career center, but they don't, right? So that, that leaves 80%. But now here's another st you know, uh, statistic that, that should get you moving towards an internship, even if you just graduated college, right? More than two in three interns secure a full-time job. That's compared to less than half for those who don't. And completing an internship increases job offers by 16%. So that's just fact, right? It, it, it's The numbers don't lie. Now, I have an episode from uh, two weeks ago um, with Lauren Berger. She's the founder and CEO of The Intern Queen. And she talks about the, the importance of internships for college students. But she also has a program where you can be an ambassador. So if you're interested, definitely check out last week's episode about this. All right. So now that you, you know, if you're listening to this, you're saying, okay, I, I know I need to get on this AI. It's not just the media hype. It's, you know, it's not just politicians, CEOs, musicians, athletes. It's not just, you know, a, a small portion of the, the, the world population that is talking about it. It's, it's something that is key for, it's going to be the key to success. And, it, and if you don't embrace it, believe me, you will fall behind. I mean, on an article that um, I read on HubSpot recently, it was about, um, you know, the role of the CEO, which I found it interesting because I definitely see AI replacing certain jobs like customer service, you know, uh, uh, even marketers to a certain extent, social media managers. There's lots of jobs that can be replaced, but the CEO, that was an interesting one. It really blew my mind. So, Parts, uh, roles of a CEO that you could automate, the, the research found was tracking company performance was the biggest task, right? Budgeting and forecasting, then developing strategic objectives, implementing proposed plans, communicating with the board, public relations, and establishing work cultures. Those were the seven tasks uh, that CEOs could almost eliminate doing. All right. And the example that they gave in the case study was NetDragon Websoft. It's a Hong Kong based online gaming company and they have over $2 billion in annual revenue. So definitely not a small company. They appointed a new CEO for the primary subsidiary of the company and the new executive's name was Tang Yu. And uh, Tang Yu, she handled all standard, you know, responsibilities from, from as as a corporate leader would, right? Analyzing 
uh, metrics, making strategic decisions, assessing potential risks, promoting productive work environment with the staff, with customers, right? And on and on. And under used leadership, the company had outperformed the Hong Kong uh, stock market since her appointment. Now, there was an unexpected twist as you read this story. And I checked uh, with many sources to make sure this was real. Tang Yu was not the CEO that you thought it was. She was not human at all. She was actually AI powered. She was a virtual robot. All right. So imagine that. And and in that uh, article, I also read that uh, McKinsey estimates that 25%, about 25% of a CEO's time is spent on tasks that could potentially be automated by AI, reviewing financial uh, performance, sending emails, predicting trends, and so on. So again, think about that. If, if, if a CEO, part of the CEO's job can be replaced, everyone is, is at risk here. But I don't like to think about it that way because I was recently at a conference um, in South Florida where we were, I was on the panel talking about AI and, and, you know, most people were like, yes, I am embracing it. Thank you. I appreciate, you know, but, but there were some people in the audience that did not like it. They, they were just, you know, especially there was one man who's a data scientist. And um, of course, as you would imagine, his job is all about crunching data. Well, now a lot of the, the apps that the AI is integrated with um, can do that for you right? Whether it's analyzing website data, employee data, financial charts, it can do that for you. So, you know, you're not going to be able to escape this. And and so my advice is that you embrace it. You, I definitely don't recommend just taking a course. I definitely recommend first playing with the tool for 10, 15, 20 hours over the course of a few weeks, get pretty good at it, and then go start taking courses and, and, and learning from the guys who've been working at this, you know, for six or seven months because the the reality is you know 99.9 percent of the people who are training people in ai right now are not experts right they've been doing this since november since open ai launched chat gpt so as i said there's no experts really in this field it, you could probably count you know uh on, on a couple couple hands uh who the experts are that have been working on this technology for over a decade but most of us are just you know learning as we go uh, I'm learning as we go, but I'm putting a lot of time. I'm putting, you know, as much as one third of my time and then my staff is putting maybe 10 to 15% of their time in using the tools daily for all the tasks and projects. And then we're reporting back and saying, what tools are working? What tasks can we eliminate or automate? Productivity, efficiency. And the way I see it is this, it's it's not going to it's not going to put your job at risk. If anything, it's going to make you more powerful, more powerful to do what you do well and what you love doing because we all have parts of our jobs, regardless of who you are, we have parts of our jobs that we don't love to do, right? And so the parts of the jobs that that is not physical, okay? Obviously, if you're an athlete, you can't, you know, go without practicing. But for most of us that have a, a, a you know, a white collar job, that job can, a good part of that, uh, office worker type of job can be uh, automated, right? And then make you more powerful to work on planning, strategy, and coming up with new ideas so that you can be a more efficient worker. And that's what I see for myself as a CEO, as a marketer, as a podcaster. Uh, I mean, I've done a lot of different things that, you know, even the book that I wrote a couple years ago in, in the course, I mean, it took me at least a year uh, to work on that project before I could put it out there. Honestly, if I want to do that book again today, it, it would take me maybe a quarter of the amount of time, right? So, uh, you know, does that mean everybody should be uh, now writing a book with AI? No, because you still have to give it context. You still have to have that human uh, creativity and, and IP. Honestly, all, all humans, all of us have this intellectual property that it... it it, it doesn't get mirrored. It's just your behavior. You're unique. All of us, all 8 billion people on earth, we are all unique. So AI is not going to replace that. Not just yet, right? There are obviously software, there's software out there that will clone you, will take everything that you've done and then create a memory and all. But I'm not talking about that, uh, you know, creating algorithms with a clone of yourself. I'm talking about the fact that it's like, the way I see it is it's like having a full-time assistant. Anytime I need something, that is a low level task that can be automated. I'm going to ask ChatGPT or whatever AI I'm using 
Um, and we have tested with Bard and a few others, but they're nowhere near what ChatGPT is doing. Plus, I truly don't trust Google uh, with their Bard and Chat and, and all their AI, even though they're the ones who really created this technology. Um, I don't trust it because Google's, you know, they're they're. Their sort of uh, main goal is to continue to dominate the market. And of course, they're going to do that with ads and data. And you look at how many projects that they have failed at over the years, and it's dozens of projects. And honestly, other than Google ads, everything else that Google has today is because they acquired, you know, like YouTube, like Android, um, and many others. And the same thing for companies like Meta and Microsoft. Microsoft too. You know, we can make a case for the fact that Microsoft, you know, invested ten billion dollars in open AI and that they have a, a you know, obviously um an interest in seeing it uh uh, grow so that they can have more dominance. But I hope that's not the case. I hope, you know, whether it's Meta, Google, um, uh, Apple, uh, Amazon, all the giants that, that, that have been dominating technology, I hope that they're not the ones who are the biggest winners. I hope that, you know, OpenAI continues with their nonprofit mission, even though they're no longer a nonprofit. Um, when Sam Altman testified in Congress, he talked about their charter uh, and went into specifics uh, as to what their mission was, right? So hopefully they keep with that. And I am seeing that because this week they launched the um, uh, Apple, the iOS uh, app. So you can get chat GPT on your um, iPhone. And guess what? You know, that's a competitor in the search engine. It's going to be a competitor to Bing. So I'm already seeing that they are doing things that are independent that may not make Microsoft more dominant, right? Because Microsoft is really using it for their enterprise clients through their Azure cloud. So, you know, look, th this is moving so fast. Every single day, I can say in the last five months or so has been truly exciting. Every day we're finding new tools that can help us be more productive and deliver better outcomes for our clients. So you as a recent grad, or even if you're a parent who's still in the workforce, I'm telling you, pair, pair up together with your kid and go out there and learn the basics of AI. And you do that just by testing the tools. So even with your daily tasks, right? Like you could create a calendar and, and your plans for uh, a vacation. Let's say Expedia and Kayak is one of the apps in the ChatGPT uh, store. So you could use that app to chart out your vacation. And in there, you could use Instacart and OpenTable. So you, you can use AI to plan out your entire trip, right? Um, and that's just the start of it, right? And I think that once you can see what the use case is in your personal life, you're going to be able to quickly translate that and say, okay, so here are some of the other tasks that I can replace uh, from doing manually and, and, and be able to complete it much faster. I can tell you the, the, the dollar amount for what we have saved is, is into the tune of hundreds of thousands of dollars. I, I really mean that, sincerely mean that. And I know I'm not the only one. I talk to other CEOs of larger companies with more than 100 employees. Uh, the ones that are using it, they can attest to, the, to, to that fact that they have um, saved that much money. So really, when I think of saving money, I think of it's money earned, right? So because if I'm saving 20, 30% of my time at a very you know small cost of $20 a month per user, you know it's like that $20 investment gives me a return of 100x. That's how I see it. Now, I also wanted to announce here in the podcast that uh, in June next month, I am going to be a keynote speaker at the Small Business Leadership Conference in Orlando. That's on June 20th. My talk, my talk is gonna focus on the way everything is changing quickly here in the business world. And the whole talk is about employing ChatGPT and AI for marketing and business. And so check it out, go to the website. It's The website is sblconference.com. And you can also email me, of course, and I'll put you on our newsletter. Um, let's see, what else can we talk about this week from um, AI? Well, I, you know, on my newsletter, I have a lot of different prompts that you can use there. You know, so one of the exercises that I gave was using it to create um, objections, right? How to, how to respond to prospects' objection of your product or service. But I'll, I'll, I'll 
do a spin on that for you, the grad who is going to be looking for a job and you're going to come before different um, hiring managers. And what you want to do is go out and determine what are the top 10, 20, 30 uh, questions that are asked in an interview. You can use ChatGPT for that. And then what I want you to do is create the response, the objection. So the, in this tutorial, what you would do for ChatGPT, you'd say, ChatGPT, um, consider possible objections for such and such question, right? So it'd be like XYZ question. Consider possible objections for XYZ question. And give me a step-by-step -step instructions on how to answer those objections in a way that'll make the hiring manager more likely to hire me. That's a, the, you know, and ChatGPT is going to give you probably 10 different ways to answer that objection. And then you can study that. So again, really cool stuff that you, you guys can be using on, uh, on ChatGPT. Obviously, the other cool um, um, feature that they launched this week was that you could turn on web browsing. So, you know, you know, when you're searching the internet before, you know, if you were using chat GPT, it tells you that the cutoff is 2021. Well, now you can just basically browse the internet and answer the questions about the, any topic or event that you're looking for, but using chat GPT. So it's conversational really, really amazing. Again, we're using it for our clients. I'm using it in everyday life with my kids. Uh, as many of you know, my wife and I homeschool our four kids. And man, it is cool. We're using it on Khan Academy. And we're using um, a few other apps that will, will, will really give them an interactive experience, but, but just take it to another level. And I think the only other big news that I saw that I think matters to uh, recent grads this week was, uh, you know, TikTok being banned in, in Montana. It goes into effect on January 1st, but obviously there's already many lawsuits. And I'd love to see what you guys think as listeners about TikTok, you know, because for like three years, that's all we heard was TikTok, right? And, and COVID. And then now AI has basically taken over. But the fact is that Congress still needs to regulate uh, social media companies like TikTok and so and Meta and, and others uh, like Twitter, because it's still very toxic. And those companies are responsible, in my opinion, for a lot of damage that they've done to, to, to uh, these younger generations. Some of you who are Gen Z and are graduating from college could probably attest to that. I, I go and I speak at colleges and, you know, students talk to me. So some feel like it's a complete waste of time and they, you know, they don't feel good when they're on these social media platforms. Others who are more, you know, you know, feeling like they can be more social through the app and learn more, obviously feel differently. So however you feel, it's an important topic. TikTok, social media, Section 230, and hopefully regulation, both for Section 230, but also AI. Listen, you're a recent grad, you need to go out there, do your homework, understand what's going on in the field. And now with AI at your hands, man, it is, it's a different ball game. You know, it's like, forget Google search, you know, search, what is that? Social media, forget about it. Those tools are, I wouldn't say obsolete, but they are like, you know, old, old history. I mean, really, because uh, you know, if you think about social media and, and search and the marketplaces, the way they disrupt the the experience between a user and a and a service provider or like a brand, you know, it 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 didn't enhance our experiences. What it did was make money for a lot of people. Like I think of the story of, you know, Nike with Amazon. Right, Amazon came in and obviously grew once they started taking on third party sellers. And then at some point, Nike, Patagonia, and many other companies said, you know what, Nike, you're not, uh, you know, uh, Amazon, they told Amazon, you're not making it easier for our clients to do business with Nike and buy Nike products. And so they moved on and took their products off of Amazon. And many companies have left Facebook and Google and others, Twitter. Um, but now with with, with ChatGPT, AI, and some of the apps, these are not apps to waste your time. These apps are to make you more efficient so that you focus on the most important things in your life. So I know it sounds like I, I, I'm, I'm you know, putting so much weight behind this one particular topic, but it's only because I can tell you it, it has done so much for me and my team already and my clients. 
and I, I just can't wait to see what the, the, the next round and the next versions look like. Obviously, I'm a big believer that we definitely do need regulation. And I encourage anybody who is you know, interested in learning more to go back and look at the uh, Senate committee hearing earlier this week. Uh, with that, I'll come back uh, next week and hopefully we could talk some more about opportunities for graduates. That's sort of my theme for these next few episodes is really trying to help uh, graduates find their their path in this world, in this AI world that is moving so fast. But it's been great uh, talking to you guys today and I will see you in the next episode.